The BMW M2 is looking pretty damn sexy, if you ask me. Ask me, Erica. Does it look sexy? Oh, yes it does. All right. Ford Focus RSs are flying off the shelves, as they say, before they've even been driven. And Audi gets clever with a billboard in Brussels. Plus, Volvo gets a new platform for some new models, and we have your FLD question of the day. Q of the D, if you will. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, I'm Derek D. Good to have you here watching one of the greatest daily shows in all the land. It's the Fastlane. What? It's the Fastlane Daily. Oh. Yeah, oh. that's what I meant. Yeah. It was not a dream. Those leaked them two photos in the magazine. Erica and Derek D up on your video screen. Oh. Right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, we saw those leaked magazine photos of the BMW M2 yesterday, but then later in the day, they had the official reveal. So again, meet the all new 2016 BMW M2. Here are all the juicy details, if you catch my drift. But, uh, basically, think of the M2 as a beefier version of the M235i. Like I said yesterday, you get a three liter inline six cylinder with twin scroll turbochargers and that'll make 365 horsepower. And at first, it was thought to have 370 horsepower, but we were off by five. Big whoop, kill us. Also, it has 343 pound-feet of that. Torque. That's right, zero, go, 60 in 4.2 seconds with the dual-clutch automatic and 4.4 seconds with the six-speed manual. Top speed is limited to 155 miles per hour. It sounds good, BM dubs. I'll take the manual, please. Thanks. Yeah, that's nice. I dig it, man. Yep. That's nice. Some people like the spotlight, and hey, that includes me and many others in this entertainment business. But Audi has a, they have a little different approach. They decided to put everyone under the spotlight at a busy intersection in Belgium at the Brussels Central Station with a giant Audi A4 billboard equipped with Audi's adaptive matrix LED headlights. Yeah. So when people or cyclists are crossing the street at night, the lights follow them, just like they would do on the road so you can see people better and it's safer. It's a pretty cool technology. Yeah. It's kind of what it is, like mm, 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 it's like following. Wow. Yeah, uh, it's cool tech. And uh, it's a great marketing stunt, I must say. Seems like it would be a little blinding if you were walking across the street, but it gets the point across in a fun way. Although here in the US, the Department of Transportation hasn't approved them yet. So in related news. <laughs> hey, come on. Yeah. Just send it over. Come on, DOT. Don't be such a dot. <laughs> so for all the Volvo fans, I know that was dumb. It looks like after years of waiting, Volvo finally has their next platform to produce new vehicles. Cell phones off, please. Okay? It'll be amateur hour. The CMA platform, and no, I'm not talking the Country Music Awards, whoa, relax, which Volvo acquired from its parent company, Geely, is going to help the brand add additional models. One of them is expected to be a Volvo XC40 compact crossover, of course, that will share its components with the next generation V40. However, the XC40 will arrive first, and then the next generation V40 will arrive sometime later. We don't expect any of this to fully take place until late 2018, which by then, I'm sure they'll have that whole self-breaking system worked out. You know, there was, there was this one. Oh, yeah, there you go. And then of course, this one. Ouch, yeah, yeah. That's the total opposite of the saying, he never saw it coming. He literally saw it directly coming at him. Right. Maybe the Volvo's mad, he had a pink shirt on, I don't know. But yeah, so that, they should have that fixed by then. All right. Looks like Ford already has 1,500 orders from UK buyers for the new Focus RS, even though none of them have had a chance to test drive it. That being said, the Ford Focus RS has been on sale in Europe forever, so most buyers, they know that this newest 350 horsepower version has the goods. In fact, the month before prices and specifications were announced at the Frankfurt Motor Show, 500 customers had already paid deposits to secure the first Focus RS's. Now that takes some focus if you ask me. <laughs> I mean those customers are really serious about buying this car. Ford is 
rocking sales. They're going to have to reorder several to keep up with the ridiculous supply because these things are going to be revving steady. <clears throat> Time for your, oh yeah, you just got it now because they all began with R, all the RS's, yeah. <laughs> It's time for your FLD question of the day. This one comes from Dan from New Jersey. That's what I'm talking about. Representing my state. Yes. And Jay in the building. Hey, so what can I do for you, Dan? Hey, Derek D and Fastlane Daily Crew. You guys are doing a great job. I just got one question for you. Oh, well, hey, I, uh, thanks, thanks, man. We do appreciate you watching the show. I appreciate you for the landscape mode. I feel like you're at a red light or something doing this question. Like, it's pretty quick. So. Uh, Anyway, yeah, man, that's one question is all we need, so fire away. What is one brand that you would never see yourself ever buying, no matter what? I mean, there's certain mm -hmm. brands like right. Hyundai and Kia who are actually upping their game a little bit. Uh, let me know. Okay, all right, good question, Dan. You asked, what is one brand you could never see yourself buying? Well, you're right. Um, Kia and Hyundai have significantly upped their game a lot lately. Well, let's start off uh, with you, Dan. What brand do you never see yourself buying? Thanks for asking, Derek D. Um, I would never buy a Hyundai or a Kia. Just hate them. Sorry. Wow. Hey, tell them how you really feel, man, right? Sheesh. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, Dan. You're not alone in that thinking. So many people say the same thing. They look at a Kia or Hyundai, even if it's a fully loaded Optima or K900, which is comparable to luxury car brands, by the way, and they still say, oh, but, but, but it's a Kia. That, that's, what, that's what people say. Mm -hmm. It's happened multiple, multiple times, and I've heard it myself. They just can't get past the fact that it is a Kia or a Hyundai. Now, I personally think some Kias are very nice, and the Hyundai Genesis is especially a fun, luxurious car to drive. So yeah, I think I would buy a Kia or a Hyundai personally. All right, not a Kia Rio or a Hyundai Accent. I, but you, you get what I mean, you know? Uh, you know? Uh, I definitely don't hate those brands. They've come a long way. Hate is a strong word. Yeah. Hate is a strong word, but I really, really, really don't like you, right? Yeah. Isn't that a song or something? I think so. Hmm, let me see, what brands for me? Well, I, you know, I could never see myself buying a Suzuki car now, a dirt bike, that's a di different story, but a car. And they don't even, I don't even think they sell them in the U.S. anymore anyway. So uh, I probably wouldn't buy a Fisker Karma, which is just called Karma now. I don't know that, I just don't see myself buying that. Um, I prefer a Tesla, I guess. Uh, Mitsubishi isn't high on my list either. Just never been a Mitsubishi guy. I don't hate them, just not my thing. Now, taking your question literally, I probably never actually will see myself buying a Rolls Royce simply because I will probably physically never be able to see me buying a Rolls Royce because they're so damn expensive. Or a Bugatti or a Bentley or anything like that, okay? Erica, what about you? Um, I don't know. I don't really like, um, yeah, Suzuki's. That would never work out. <laughs> it just wouldn't work out. Sorry. Mitsubishi, just from a standpoint of Team Subaru. Yeah, Mitsubishi, it's and not then, you, it's me. No offense, but I could never buy a Mercedes. It's just not my style. I'd easily take a Lexus. She's just trying to, <laughs> trying to zing me over here. Whatever. Not my thing, man. Okay, whatever. Again, that's like a brand stigma, though. You're looking at the brand like Mercedes. Ooh. No, it's also the appearance. No offense. All right. Hey. It's not right. me. Hey. I probably, uh, no, I probably would buy a Subaru, but still. Yeah. But, but I'm not. I'm gonna say I'm not because. You know, it's funny though that Dan asked this question because we did a bit about this subject on the streets of New York City called Guess the Kia Sorento. Remember that? Great bit. You'd be surprised what people said. This kid with the Google glasses right here, he guessed it to be $100,000. So yeah, we covered up all the badges and it was very interesting to see what people thought. Mm -hmm. So I suggest you go watch it. The link is in the description. It's worth the watch. <laughs> So there you go, Dan. Thank you for the question, man. Uh, weigh in yourself, guys, using hashtag FLDQ of the D, and you can send your own video in just like Dan did to, uh, what is it? Oh, oh, tips at fastlanedaily.com. Tips at fastlanedaily.com, and remember, landscape mode, we prefer a YouTube link, and keep it to 30, 45 seconds. 30 to 45 seconds, all right? Thank you very much. That was a good question. Uh -huh. Good question. And that will do it for Fastlane Daily today. 
I'm Derek D. Thank you for watching, everybody. Please subscribe if you haven't. I mean, if you're watching, why not subscribe, right? We do appreciate it very much so. Okay. That's, that's my cue that we're done. It was not a dream. Those leaked them two photos in the magazine. Erica and... <laughs> AK, where were you on that one? Comments. No, no, no. We, <laughs> wrong day. It's, uh, it's today's Thursday. The, the, the email. Tips at PassingDeli.com. Thank you. Jeez. He's talking out of like a voice box or something today. And yeah, that was weird. Yeah. Ow, we're living in the fast lane, baby.